Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of A Swift Look. I'm Zoe, and today we're going to be diving in to Taylor Swift's Tortured Poets Department collaborators, because now we officially know who is writing on this brand new album. We also know which songs are going to be explicit, which songs are not explicit, and we have a few Taylor Swift cryptic messages, Easter eggs to dissect. So let's dive into it. We are just a few days away from the release of Taylor Swift's brand new album. Cannot believe we are so close. We're just a mere days away. And because we really haven't gotten that much stuff from Taylor leading up to the release of the album, every little crumb we seem to be getting, whether it's a phrase that gets put out on the internet or a cryptic mural that gets shared or finding out the collaborators of the album, I feel like we all just kind of like latch onto it and are like d dissect every part of it because we're not getting that much, honestly, from her, at least as of right now, as of the time of recording. So let's dive in first to the Tortured Poets Department collaborators, because I do feel like the people that Taylor chooses to work with on any given album definitely can tell us what we would probably expect from the album sonically, lyrically, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, Taylor Swift's main collaborator, at least honestly for the last decade, has been Jack Antonoff. They first worked together on the fabulous album 1989, way back when, created some great songs together with that album, and then they've worked together really ever since. And Taylor has sprinkled in some new people here and there, but her her closest friend, her closest collaborator has been Jack. Now, obviously with Evermore Folklore, she started to work with some new people, specifically Aaron Desner. Um, and they created great songs together. Then they can continue to work together when she put out Midnight. So again, another person that she's worked with multiple times across multiple albums and someone who she definitely trusts very much. Well, spoiler alert, but this album, new album coming out, is going to be, again, another collaboration between Taylor, Jack Antonoff, and Mr. Aaron Desner. So a majority of the songs that are going to be on Torture Poets Department, at least from the standard version, we don't know who's going to be a part of any of the bonus tracks quite yet, though I think we can probably assume it will be the same, though maybe there's like a wild card person in there. But a majority of the songs on this new album will be collaborations between either Taylor and Jack or Taylor and Aaron, uh, which I think can kind of, will kind of give us a sense of what's to come or what's to be expected for each song, because I feel like a Taylor and Jack song is very different than a Taylor and Aaron Desner song, sonically. There's some overlap, but I think I think it is a bit different. So as I mentioned, all um, but just a handful of songs will be collaborations between either Taylor and Jack or Taylor and Aaron. Um, on the song Fortnite, which is featuring Post Malone, that is a song um, written by Taylor, Jack Antonoff, and Post Malone. So Post is getting a songwriting credit on that song. And then um, the song Florida, featuring Florence and the Machine, is a song written by Taylor and Florence Welch. So it's only Taylor and Florence, which I think is really interesting. Two female songwriters coming together for that song. Um, I'm really curious to see how that sounds and how that kind of shakes out. Only two songs on the standard album are written solely by Taylor Swift. My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys and Who's Afraid of Little Old Me. Now, I feel like when Taylor decides to write something solo, I feel like that means it's very, very personal to her. And I also feel like it's a situation where she, it's all kind of come to her at once. There's just something to me about when she writes her own songs that I don't know if it means more to her when she writes them solo, but I just, I don't know. It, it makes me more excited for those songs because I know she wrote them solely by herself. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who have, I don't know if issues is, but are are wanting Taylor to branch out from the Jack Antonoff school of music, <laughs> who are wanting her to work with other collaborators, other producers, other songwriters. And I'm kind of, I kind of found myself in the middle. I really, really love her songs with Jack Antonoff. Some of my favorite Taylor Swift songs are the songs she's done with Jack. And I think I think he can be a really, really great producer. But I do feel like in some ways, 
she's gotten a little bit comfortable in that Jack Antonoff sound and Jack Antonoff world. And I do like the addition of Aaron Desner because I think it brings out something different from her. And I think Aaron Desner's taste in music is similar to Taylor and Jack's, but also different. And he brings in a unique perspective. So I like his addition, but I would like to see in the future Taylor stretch her limits a little bit more and expand her horizons a little bit more and work with some other songwriters and some other people, because I would be very curious to hear what would come out of those songwriting sessions. Now, obviously we haven't heard this album yet, so we have no idea if it's going to sound similar to past albums, if it's going to be different. There's still a lot to be determined here, but I will say that if if this album sounds a lot like Midnight's or Lover or Reputation or whatever, um, I'm going to start to feel like, yeah, maybe it's time for her to just to just creatively try something different. But obviously, again, they make great songs together. So I'm looking forward to it. The other piece of news I wanted to just touch on is the um, Chicago mural that went viral this, this week where um, there was this big mural shared up on a building with the text TTPD and then the number 13, obviously Taylor's number kind of like painted onto this mural. There was then a QR code that was painted that fans could could go to, which then linked to a YouTube short on Taylor's YouTube channel. Um, But it had the text, um, it had the text error 321. So there's like nothing there, but it just says error 321, which we don't know what that means. Still to be determined. I kind of feel like it's maybe leading us to a music video just because it led her or led us to her YouTube channel. But someone mentioned that um, that the uh, the significance of error three two one often indicates an error in communication across telephone lines, fax machines, whatever. Like that's what would pop up, and so it makes me think that the if if it is a music video that the general theme of it is going to be one of miscommunication and of not aligning uh, plans or whatever. So I don't know what song this pertains to. Again, so much uncertainty, so much we still do not know. But I love that we're getting a little bit of Easter eggs here and there. We're getting a little bit a bit of information and um, we're very, very close to finding out what this album sounds like. I should also say back to the back to the track listing and kind of the songwriters and stuff. We we do know uh, what songs are explicit. I think we have, let's see, The Tortured Poets Department is explicit, Down Bad, But Daddy I Love Him, Florida, Love of My Life, I Can Do It With a Broken Heart, and The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. Those songs are all explicit. So we know Taylor, she's after, I think, what was the first explicit album? Folklore? Since Folklore, she has not been afraid to throw in an F-bomb or throw in any sort of bad language, which honestly, I mean, she's 34 years old. The girl can curse. It's okay. I don't think she needs to be worried about the children or or anything. She's a grown woman. Um, But we will be getting explicit songs on the Tortured Poets Department. Okay, that's it for our, our TTPD daily rundown. I'm sure we'll have much more to discuss tomorrow and in the days coming up before we get the official album Friday again. Cannot wait. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts on Taylor's songwriter collaborations. Are you excited for the Jack Antonoff, Aaron Desner songs? Do you wish she was working with other people? Let me know everything that you're thinking and also share your thoughts and opinions about all these Easter eggs we're getting. Like, are we getting a music video? What are, what is she trying to tell us? Leave all your thoughts. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.